Hi, it's Dottie Harrigan, and you're watching the Flower Handlers channel, the place where more people learn how to enjoy more flowers for more reasons far more often. Hello, flower lover. Are you contemplating designing wedding flowers for yourself or someone you love? Well, I have to tell you, I never recommend designing your own wedding flowers because they require a level of expertise, have to be done at the last minute, and most brides just don't need that added stress right before their wedding day. But if you have your heart set on it because you're on a tight budget or you're one of those hands-on kinds of brides that want to be part of every aspect of your wedding day, or you've offered to do the wedding flowers for someone you care about, I'll show you how to use my 12 styling techniques to get a custom signature look with handcrafted designs that are personalized by you. I've done countless weddings throughout my career from simply elegant to over the top, and I've loved every one of my clients. I understand my brides on a budget and those who want to be part of every aspect of their day. So over the years, I've coached my do-it-yourselfers and partnered with my I want to do some things too, brides. So I'll tell you, it can be done and you can enjoy it. Just keep these things in mind. Get organized early, plan ahead of time, procure your supplies wisely, order from your favorite floral retailer, and then practice, practice, practice. For design-it-yourself wedding flowers, the styling process should be satisfying, rewarding, and pleasant. A fun time, co-creating with friends and family and the result should make you proud of your florals and filled with the anticipation of using them on wedding day. So here are 12 wedding floral pieces in the Garden and Glitz theme from the personal flowers for the people, the ceremony flowers, the reception flowers, and the banquet flowers, plus the flower godmother styling techniques I use to create them. For the bridal bouquet, we used an embellished metallic hydrangea as the base for gardeny roses, asters, charmelia, and status to be bound using the handy hand tied technique. The stems were wrapped with layers of silver and gray metallic ribbon, and the bouquet was placed in a cylinder vase to continue drinking until it was needed. For the bridesmaids, we found a shapely bud vase, customized it with paint, coiled wire, and a structure for flowers using the exterior wire armature technique. Then we placed one stem of each flower and foliage in the vase of water. The vase will allow the bridesmaids to rest their bouquets when they're not needed, and each bridesmaid will have a handcrafted keepsake from the wedding. The flower girl's purse was embellished with silver net, rhinestones, and a silver leaf. The ring bearer's box was painted, its ribbon replaced, and then was embellished with a metallic trim and a set of costume wedding rings. The technique of lovely liners with salt shakers for the purse and a little cup for the box was used for both these pieces. Wiring and taping corsages and boutonnieres is one of the hardest things for designers to master, so I avoided that for you by using the technique of maxi mini clusters. The women's flowers were tied into tuzzy muzzies, which can be placed in vases, then wrapped and decorated at the last minute. The men's boutonnieres were simply bound with decorative wire and can be refrigerated to keep them fresh. To continue the garden and glitz theme into the ceremony decor, an external natural armature was made of river cane and mini wreaths, then painted gray and tied to a tin bucket. The foliage and tall flowers were woven into and through the armature for height, fullness, and stability. For pew decor, ribbon was wrapped around a tall tin and anchored using double-faced tape. A base of foliage, a vine embellishment, and lightweight flowers were added in. You'll notice we exchanged tins with the altar arrangement. It just made more sense when we began to design. Both tins have plastic liners to hold water. Containers pulled from your own collection are the things that make your wedding flowers signature. For gardeners at heart, this design for the couple's memory table is styled with leftover flowers and tidbits of foliage using the divide and conquer technique. It's a personal expression of who they are and what's important to them and will be displayed along with other memorabilia. Often the name card table does not have a lot of space, but it still needs some decor, especially once all those cards have been claimed. This line em up design takes less than three inches of table depth but offers a beautiful focal point over a bed of cards, and it can easily be moved to another more visible location once guests settle into their seats. An interior wire armature is an easy way to prep vases for cocktail, rounds, and high boys. Plus, it's the perfect technique for making additional little vases, embellished with ribbons and trimmings from your wedding supplies. 
Fill these with leftover, broken, short stem flowers and use them as accent pieces or give them as gifts to helpers, assistants, or the professionals serving you on wedding day. Using the interior natural armature technique, we curl the vine into a designer bowl and wedge the decorated glass candle in place. Then swirl the metallic ruscus around the sides of the glass and fill the bowl with flowers. Garden and glitz, candles and flowers, this table centerpiece has it all and unifies the whole theme. With a buffet filled with food, there's not always a lot of room for flowers, but in this originally pink vase, painted gray to align with the theme, the flowers rise above the food and make the perfect enhancement, especially before the food arrives and after it's removed. Your buffet table will have a statement piece all throughout the day. And last, but absolutely not least, once a bride arrives at her party, she needs a place to put her bouquet. Use our popular paraphernalia technique to lift and display the bridal bouquet in a decorated vase for the sweetheart table or head table. It'll keep the flowers drinking happily throughout the celebration and perfectly pretty for days on end. Well, there you have them. Designs for every aspect of the wedding day, from people to places and things, created with my 12 styling techniques. I hope you found the ideas helpful and trust that you'll give the techniques a try as you contemplate and practice creating your wedding flowers. You can download free instruction sheets for each of the techniques at flowergodmother.com. Make a list of the florals you need for the wedding. Think about what containers and vessels you already have that can be personalized to fit your theme. Mix and match my styling techniques for signature designs and custom arrangements that have that beautiful handcrafted look. Then practice, practice, practice so designing goes smoothly during your wedding week. Remember what writers, poets, and artists have taught us throughout the ages. Flowers are not a luxury but a necessity for life well lived. There's lots of opportunity to bring flowers into your life for the engagement party, bridal shower, rehearsal dinner, or just for a girl's night in. As you practice making arrangements before your wedding, you'll be able to enjoy more flowers for more reasons far more often as you discover how nice it is to have flowers about the house day to day. Visit flowergodmother.com and subscribe to our email list to get instant access to my 12 tech sheets, care and handling guidelines, and a few more flower resources. You'll also get some exclusive content and personal updates that I just don't share anywhere else, like the detailed Design It Yourself Wedding Flower Guide posted along with this video on the Flower Godmother blog. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time on the Flower Handlers channel. In the meantime, may your life and your wedding be touched by the beauty and wonder of flowers. This is Dottie Harrigan, the Flower Godmother, wishing you a bloomin' day.